In the spring of 2010, Concerned Belizeans Incorporated of Chicago hosted a welcome reception to honor the Prime Minister of Belize, the Honorable Dean O'Barrow. This was a successful turnout as Belizeans living in the Midwest diaspora greeted the Prime Minister, the First Lady, Ambassador to Belize, His Excellency Mr. Nestor Mendez, and distinguished guests. Guests in attendance commiserated with fellow Belizeans in a positive exchange to foster continued support for investment in their home country. Mystic Vibes Caribbean News features exclusive interviews with the Prime Minister, First Lady, Ambassador Mendez, and other dignitaries. You are watching Mystic Vibes Caribbean News. Okay, I'm here with Patrick Farber. He is the, the Minister of Education of Belize. Um, I have a question now. Uh, you, what is the initiative of, uh, uh, that you have in education today in Belize? Well, it's a number of things actually. Uh, Belize has a very good education system, I'll start by saying that, but of course one that can do with a lot of improvement. Uh, uh, this government's current push is towards uh, getting more of our teachers trained, a higher percentage of our teachers trained, and also creating uh, greater access for students. At the primary school level, we are doing pretty good, uh, but at the secondary level, we'd very much like to increase access to our students, where um, more than a half of those who are at high school age uh, are not in high school. And it has been the push of uh, this Ministry of Education under this uh, current administration to increase access uh, for these uh, students primarily at the secondary level. But uh, there are a host of other initiatives that we are uh, currently pushing. Uh, as I've said, teacher training is big on our agenda, early childhood education, trying to make sure that more of our younger children uh, get that uh, that start strong experience uh, that can uh, prepare them to do better as they go on to primary and secondary school. And of course, uh, we cannot leave out uh, tertiary education, uh, something that is uh, relatively pretty young in Belize. We only have uh, one national university, the University of Belize, and one private uh, university, along with a handful of other uh, junior colleges that offer associate degree programs. Uh, but uh, as I've said, uh, we, it, is a, it is a system that we're very proud of. It has uh, turned out some very productive citizens. Uh, and while we do have uh, things that we wish to do to improve the system, uh, we are happy that it is a good system and that it has worked and served so many Belizeans so very well uh, in Belize and abroad. Uh, thank you, sir, for okay. uh, participating. Pleasure. OK, I'm here with Noreen Cato. And she's going to tell us about her, the organization and the purpose of this meeting today. Um, our, our organization is called ACE, the Association for Community Enhancement. And um, what we try to do is to harness infrastructural material to help uh, enhance Belizean communities at home. Like we got uh, two garbage trucks from the, the Chicago City Council. We were sending those down to Belize with 500 garbage containers. And we're hoping to maintain this relationship so that we can uh, help empower the Belizean community and provide them aid in the form of fire trucks, ambulances, that's sort of thing. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. How are you enjoying the event tonight? Doing we're very well, very well. Uh, I mean, it's a great event. It's, uh, it was uh, a great event, and I'm happy to meet uh, the Prime Minister of Belize today. Yeah, I get the feeling that uh, after seeing everybody talk, that we're all part of a great Caribbean community. Uh, definitely, definitely. We're part of the, the, the this event tonight is not just for the Belizean people, but I believe that uh, this event is for all, all of us, all of us who come from the Caribbean, no matter where you come from, Haiti, uh, uh, Jamaica, no matter where you come from, as long as you're part of the Caribbean, this is our event. Okay, nice talking to you. All right, thank you.
Okay, I'm here with uh, Dion Lopez. Uh, tell me the name of your organization and its purpose. The Caribbean Association of Midwest America. Our mission is to link Caribbean people living in Midwest America one person at a time. That is my mission. And I've been uh, chipping away at it for four years. Thankfully, I'm, I'm, see, I'm out here connecting with people like you, the Belizean community. I go everywhere and anywhere that has anything to do with the Caribbean community in the Midwest. Uh, I, I listened to your speech intently mm -hmm. about the importance of the census. Yes. And the other thing that really got to me was the, the identity of the people of the Caribbean. Right. Uh, tell us a little bit about, about those two things. Okay, well, I am the chairperson for the Caribbean diaspora uh, in Chicago for the 2010 census. Um, our numbers, I have partnered with, there is a nationwide initiative called Carib ID 2010, and this is a partnership to get all West Indians on board and participating in the 2010 census. Now, the reason for that is we are not counted. We are grouped in with African Americans and any other um, ethnicity in the diaspora. So we have our Puerto Rican brothers and sisters falling under Latino and all of that other stuff. Well, we need to let everybody know about our spending power here in the United States. And this year for the 2010 census is probably the shortest form in the, in the census history. 10 simple questions. Now, the problem with Caribbean people not responding to the census is because they're afraid that immigration issues are gonna come into play or, you know, as them said, people fast in them business and all of that. But, you know, what we want to do is dispel the myth that any, any information that's given in the census is divulged to other departments in the, in the U.S. government. It's actually protected for 72 years. So not even the President of the United States can have access to this information. And it's important that we get everybody in the Caribbean community counted because our numbers equates to dollars. And in order to make it even more understandable, sponsorship for let's say our festivals and event is dependent on numbers. And so if we can't tell them how many people we have to reach, how are we supposed to get sponsorship money for our events? So this is why the census is important for people to participate. Now what I'd like to encourage people to do is when they're filling out the census form is to check, check black, not Hispanic, and write in their country of origin. So. Black, not, not Hispanic, Jamaica. Black, not Hispanic, Haiti. Black, not Hispanic, Trinidad and Tobago. Because this is the only way we can get an accurate count of the Caribbean population in the diaspora in the United States. Thing, uh, you're full of a lot of good news. One thing you mentioned was June being Caribbean History Month? June is officially Caribbean American History Month in the entire United States. This is actually the fifth year, and so my job has been to get that message out across the Midwest. And so there's a slew of events that's planned for the month of June. Uh, people can go visit the website caribislands.com, C-A-R-I-B-E-I-L-A-N-Z. Dot com and click on the link for Caribbean American History Month events that's happening in the city of Chicago. Okay, thank you so much. It was my pleasure, my pleasure. Um, I'm here with the, with the ambassador uh, of Belize, uh, Nestor Mendez. And uh, my question, sir, is um, what is the importance of the ambassador, uh, you representing the country of Belize here in the United States? The ambassador of Belize is the highest representative of the government and people of Belize in the United States of America. We are the direct contact between the government of Belize and the government of the United States. We also look after the interests of our Belizean nationals in the United States. The importance of tonight, uh, the significance of an event like tonight, it's because uh, the government of Belize is serious about focusing on our diaspora, harnessing the power of our people abroad in terms of the resources, the technical know-how, the experience, the expertise, and harnessing all of that in favor of aiding the development of our country. Okay. Um, how, how do you get this job? Yeah, it seems like this is a great job for you. Are you 
Are you st situated here in Chicago, or where where is your 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 base? I am uh, I am posted at the Embassy of Belize in Washington. I reside in Washington. Um, I was appointed ambassador after many many years in the Foreign Service of Belize. I'm a career diplomat. Um, I have served in Guatemala, in London, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Belize. And uh, two years ago, when Pre Prime Minister Barrow came to power, I was at the point in my career where I was prepared to be given additional responsibility and the experience, and he honored me with the designation to lead the Embassy of Belize in Washington. Now, it seems like a really important job. How long do you plan on doing this type of thing? You want I serve the government of Belize and the Prime Minister of Belize and the people of Belize, and I will serve them as long as they need me. Ambassador Mendez, thank you for the interview, and uh, have a good time in Chicago. Thank you. Okay. I'm here with the First Lady of Belize, Honorable Dean Barrow, Mrs. Barrow. Uh, I'd just like to ask you, uh, how was your time in Chicago and what's your purpose of being here? I'm uh, having a good time actually. Uh, we're here visiting with the Belizean diaspora and um, actually this is our first day in Chicago. Uh, we visited with the mayor this morning and tonight we're visiting with uh, some some of our Belizeans here at this cocktail event. Okay, and you're impressed with the city, I take it? I am very impressed. This is not my first time visiting. It's like my third or fourth time, so I, I've always enjoyed Chicago. You've been in office for two years now. How, how has this experience of being as First Lady in Belize been? A lot of pressure, no. <laughs> um, it's been good. Uh, we've been trying to do a lot of good work, social work, so, um, you know, whenever you can influence change, in, in especially children, that's a very good thing, and I, I'm taking the opportunity to do so, so that's good. You have such a busy schedule, and uh, what do you do, like, do you ever get a chance to have time for yourself or your family? Yes, I do. I do. I, I do. We... I do take time out for myself and my family, so that's good. Thank you for taking time with us, Mrs. Vibes. You're welcome. Thank you for doing this. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Real good trooper. Yeah, I'm here with the Honorable Dean Barrow, uh, the Prime Minister of Belize, and I'd like to ask one question. Um, how important it is to take time for your busy schedule to come and talk to the people of Belize, outside of Belize? Very, very important indeed. Uh, you would have heard earlier uh, people enumerating all the things that the various Belizean organizations in this area do for the homeland. It's critical that we uh, express our appreciation for all those efforts and that we indicate how much we want to have them maintain their ties with the homeland, how much we want to strengthen those ties. So it was critical that I come out here. Okay, one, one last thing. You're going to have a town hall meeting on Sunday. Uh, what do you hope to accomplish with this town hall? Again, it's, it's a matter of getting the details of the information out there uh, to Belizeans here about what's happening at home, what we're trying to do, and hopefully persuade them that the government that I head is in fact doing good for Belize. Uh, how important is it to have a relationship between the Belize here and back home? It's very important. Um, it's, it's a matter of the 
fact that the people here were born in Belize, that they still love Belize, it's important that they continue to work for Belize. What's especially important is that as well they teach their children who are born in this country and who are first and foremost Americans nevertheless to appreciate where their parents came from and to foster the love in their children for Belize as well. Very important for us. Thank you for your time.